Hello, and welcome to Nothing Ever Happens in Canada, and I'm Canadian Girl. Thanks for joining me today. This is a Canadian podcast looking to explore the myths, legends, and just good old tales Canada has to tell. This week, we're going to look at the many sightings of mermaids in Canada. Do you believe in mermaids? Do you know who the Emerald Princess is? Do you know where Canada's very own Little Mermaid is located? Or where the first photo of a mermaid was taken and published in a local newspaper? Let's jump into this mermaid tale now. The first time we see the word mermaid is in 1586. John Davis, on his second voyage to the Canadian Arctic, took a ship called Just This. In Old English, mer means sea and maid means young lady. In 1610, the first recorded sighting of a mermaid in Canada by Captain Richard Whiteborn of Exmouth and his crew members were in St. John's Harbor of Newfoundland. Whiteborn claimed, I espied swiftly to come swimming towards me, looking cheerful. It had to be a woman. This, I suppose, was a mermaid. Four years later, in 1614, the next sighting off the coast of Newfoundland by Captain John Smith of Jamestown. He claimed to have seen a mermaid swimming about with all possible grace. She had long green hair and was very attractive. Then, for 86 years, she becomes a myth in Canada until, side note, before we go on to the next part. Though he is not Canadian, he mentions our merfolk in a very interesting manner that I thought deserves mentioning. Plus, he's a pirate, and his name, Blackbeard. It's 1700, and recorded in Blackbeard's very own log books, he states several times he had seen the Mer people and warned his crew to stay away from enchanted waters, which is where he claimed Mer people lived. Hans Christian Andersen publishes The Little Mermaid in 1837, a fairy tale about a young mermaid wanting to give up her sea life to be a human. Thirty-three years later, the mermaid sightings begin again. In the 1870s, three local men went fishing with a local guide they had hired to take them off of Point Grey. This is the UBC area of Vancouver today. They all claimed to have saw a mermaid, said she had blonde hair, brown skin, she surfaced close by their boat, made eye contact, and dove away. The guide was terribly upset by the sighting. He believed mermaids to be a bad omen, fearing one would be doomed or die after seeing one was a local legend. Mermaids are often seen to bring floods, storms, shipwrecks, and drownings in some cultures. The three local men were said to be respectable men in town, not known to lie or make up stuff. There is also a report of a guy dying shortly after seeing a mermaid being on the Squamish River, but I could not find out if these two stories were connected. I just found it interesting and wanted to point it out. From 1870 to the 90s, seamen reported many sightings of mermaids off the coast of Vancouver and Victoria. Six years later, just off Gerbis Island by Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, a fisherman named Mr. Bagnall claimed to the Cape 
Brooklyn Eagle newspaper on August 22nd. There is no doubt the mysterious stranger is what is known as a mermaid, he stated. While on board, he saw a woman floating on the surface of the water. To their surprise, when they approached, it turned around, looked at them, and disappeared, only to resurface again in a few moments, then once more disappeared altogether. He claimed she had long dark hair, like a horse's mane, and had very long fingers. In 1967, the most famous sighting of them all, one to this day still recognized by the Nature Conservatory of Canada as the last known sighting of a mermaid, the Active Pass or Main Island Mermaid Sighting. It was early evening on June 13, 1967, when passengers on a ferry approached close to the west entrance of Active Pass, just outside of Victoria, known as Helen's Point on Main Island. She was seen and reported to local authorities by multiple passengers on board. They claimed to have seen a mermaid with long blonde hair sitting on a rock eating salmon. She had the upper body of a woman, and some even claimed she was topless, and her bottom half was said to look like a porpoise. A passenger named George Harrison from Sioux City, Iowa, took a famous photo, the first ever published of a mermaid that was in the Times Colonist newspaper the day after. A man from Cobble Hill said to be flying over the area around 7 p.m. took an aerial photo that collaborated the passengers on the ferry story. Two days later, on June 15, 1967, a $25,000 reward, today around $200,000, was offered by the colonist newspaper for the mermaid. The specimen had to be confirmed by a biologist. One more sighting was reported 50 kilometers away from Main Island at Cordova Bay one week later, but the witness could not be sure and had no proof. Some believe this to be nothing more than a hoax, a well thought out trick by an actress or possible photographer trying to make some money. What do you think? Do you know the main island mermaid? She would be about 60 to 70 years old today. In 1973, Canada's very own Little Mermaid, inspired by the famous Little Mermaid statue in Copenhagen, Denmark, arrives just off of Stanley Park and sits in Vancouver's harbour. Have you seen this mermaid before? If you've ever been to Vancouver and visited Stanley Park, you have most likely seen her. But here's the real truth. She's the most mistaken mermaid in Canada. She's actually not a mermaid at all. She's a girl in a wetsuit. You see, the artist wanted to make a replica of the famous Copenhagen statue of the Little Mermaid, but was denied by the original artist the right to do so. He found his own way to do it and put her in a wetsuit. If you look close, she is wearing goggles on her head and flippers on her feet. Let the mermaid mania begin. It's 1989 and Disney releases The Little Mermaid to the big screen. Also this year, we meet the world famous Emerald Princess located in Mermaid Cove. In Sultry Bay Provincial Park, close to Powell River, BC. She is 600 pounds, solid bronze, nine feet tall, a mermaid princess statue, 
created by artist Simon Morris. She was sank 60 feet below the surface and is famously known in the diving community as the Emerald Princess. There will always be a mermaid in BC waters. A fun fact, a copy of the Emerald Princess cast was lowered into the Grand Cayman in the Caribbean. So there are twin mermaids in the ocean 5,022 kilometers apart. There is only one other mermaid statue in Canada. It is located on Salt Spring Island, BC. But back to the real mermaids. Do they exist? Do you believe? Are they just a fairy tale? Either way, they are a part of Canada's legends and folklore throughout the maritime provinces. Though there has not been a sighting in years, it seems their mermaid tales live on. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I would love to hear your thoughts or your own mermaid tales. You can find me on social media at Nothing Canada or of course my email is always in the show notes below. I'm Canadian Girl. Thanks for listening. Until next time. I'd like to recommend a podcast that seems fitting to go with these mermaid tales. The Disney Story Original Podcast, especially Episode 6, Part 1 and 2. You can listen to it wherever you get your podcasts, but of course I will include it in the show notes below. I'd like to thank Anchor, again, for just giving me this opportunity to create a podcast so easily, and I've done it all on my phone. No joke, all on my phone, no computer, with this amazing app. So if you think you can't make a podcast, yes you can. Go ahead, give it a try. Thanks again, Anchor. And to you guys who listen to the very, very end, you're the best kind of people out there. So thanks again. I'm Canadian Girl. Until next time. adventure and you want to hang out for some more where you can be a part of an exclusive adventure crew head on over to our patreon page now it's always the first link in the show notes below you can also find our patreon link right at the top of our webpage at nothingcanada.com 